Today I want to talk about our appetite. Not what we ate for lunch, but a different kind. Our appetite for fast fashion. What do we mean when we say that? It's called fast fashion because of how quickly retailers can move designs from the catwalk into stores to feed the demand for new trends. We've moved past the days where trends simply changed with the seasons to now having trends change over 50 times a year. It's a culture of throwaway fashion where we're encouraged to buy countless items of really cheap clothing, wear them a few times, and then throw it in just in time for that next trend. If we buy a t-shirt for $5, we don't keep much expectation. We don't expect much from the quality. We don't even expect to keep it for long. Its quick life cycle is part of the deal. But is this model and pace of fast fashion sustainable? What are the consequences of our use and throw textile economy? While the impact of big oil industries on the environment has been getting a lot of attention, the impact that the fashion industry and our use and throw habits have on the environment has been largely overlooked. We use too much and we dispose irresponsibly. Let's try and quantify this impact. The fashion industry produces about 10% of the global carbon dioxide emissions. That's about 5 billion tons of carbon dioxide a year. What about freshwater consumption? 79 trillion liters per year. That's how much water filling up 31.6 million Olympic-sized pools would take. Fashion is a major consumer of water. It's not just about how much water is used, but it's about the wastewater we generate as well. The treatments that we do to produce the textiles, like the chemical washes and the color dyeing process, add up to contributing 20% of the global industrial water pollution. Sometimes it can be hard to visualize these incredibly large numbers and the inputs that go into our clothes. So let's use a single pair of jeans as an example. UN predicts that a single pair of jeans requires one kilogram of cotton. Just that one kilogram of cotton needs land the size of a small Toronto condo to grow. And we make a lot of cotton as a society. Since cotton grows in drier climates, that one kilogram of cotton needs up to 10,000 liters of water. And that's just the global average. That number is double in drier climates like India, which just happens to be a big producer of cotton. That global average of 10,000 liters is about 14 years worth of drinking water for a single person. When it comes to chemicals, that one kilogram of cotton needs about half its weight in fertilizers and pesticides. Now I've been talking about cotton for a bit, which is a natural fiber. So far it seems that producing fast fashion with cotton is bad enough, yet it gets worse with man-made fibers. We haven't talked about the elephant in the room, polyester. Polyester is a plastic that dominates production. Let's do a quick little exercise. If everyone here today could check the tag at the back of their shirt or on the side of their shirt, what is your shirt made of? We can take a few seconds now to check. It may say 100% cotton, maybe 100% polyester. Most will say some sort of blend and polyester is most likely a part of that blend. We love polyester as a society. It's cheap to make and buy, whether it's for our waterproof jackets to the delicate scarves that we love. It's really hard to get away from polyester. Part of this stems from its convenience. It's versatile, durable, and easy to clean. Yet polyester fibers are anything but clean. 70 million barrels of oil a year are used to make polyester fibers. Yes, 
Polyester is sourced from fossil fuels. When we think of fossil fuels, we think of the gas in our cars or the energy generating companies that power our cities. But we have to begin to view our polyester shirt as fossil fuel as well. A shirt made of polyester has double the carbon footprint compared to one made from cotton. Aside from this fossil fuel dilemma of polyester, there's this other beast, microplastic pollution. When we wash our polyester clothes, microplastics, these tiny pieces of polyester, wash away and end up in lakes and oceans. When marine animals ingest these microplastics, it leads to a whole host of health issues. When we think of plastic pollution in the oceans, we think of sea animals getting stuck in plastic nets but microplastics are invisible dangers to these animals. Plastics of any size are a problem. I wish the textile story ended here, but it ends in the landfill. 93% of all textile waste in Canada ends in landfills, and then most of it's burnt because plastic doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't break down easily, if at all. It's projected to take thousands of years for plastic to biodegrade. You may ask, why don't we just recycle polyester clothing the way we recycle other plastics? This is actually starting to take place. Large retailers are looking to implement initiatives to make recycling possible. There's even solutions on the market like recycled polyester. However, even if we figure out a scaled up recycling method, can we keep the loop of make the fabric, use it, then recycle going for more than once or twice? Recycling is good, but not great. Inevitably, once we cannot recycle further, when the material cannot handle another round of recycling, it ends in the landfill. So recycling can't be our only solution. Recycled polyester is still polyester, a plastic that does not go anywhere. Another thing we must ask ourselves is, can we recycle all of our clothes? Recalling our exercise from earlier about checking our tags, a lot of our clothes have mixed fibers. For example, the tag may say 50% polyester, 40% cotton, and 10% spandex. It makes our clothes versatile, but mixed fibers render the entire item of clothing unrecyclable since different fibers have different recycling and degradation parameters. Getting educated on the impact of our production and consumption patterns is the first step. Now I do want to shift gears to what we can do to make positive strides when it comes to the clothes that we choose to wear. There's a lot that can be done. We need to pay attention to materials, production, life cycle, and disposal. How can we target all these things at once? The answer lies in the idea of circular economy. You may have heard of this, but what does it mean? Circular economy involves creating a closed loop system where the output of one industry becomes the input of another industry, thereby designing a sustainable system. This way, we don't burden the planet for new resources and the only waste we produce is compostable, meaning that becomes an input or a nutrient for the Earth's processes. This is where I become passionate about being part of the solution the solution for throwaway fashion, and the detrimental role of polyester. Keeping in mind this idea of circular economy that I was taught in my environmental science courses, I began to explore ways in which I could combine my interest in organic chemistry, innovation, and sustainability into one solution. So got to thinking, we know that crops are used for natural fibers like cotton and linen. What if I told you that the part of the crop that gets thrown away 
or the food we throw away could be used for fabrics. While researching the structure and components of many different textile fibers and comparing how cotton is different from polyester, it became evident that food waste is a powerhouse. It's not only useful for natural products, but it can be used to make a fabric that targets the big plastic giant, polyester. We can use food waste to make something that looks and feels like a polyester. That's part of my mission at Altex, a sustainable biomaterials company I co-founded with my friend and colleague Maya Arshad last year. At Altex, we're tackling the plastic problem by creating a sustainable polyester alternative through our waste to wardrobe solution. We take one of the world's largest sources of garbage, food waste, and we generate it into a bioplastic used to create sustainable polyester. Food waste has a lot of unrealized potential as a candidate for our next sustainable fiber. We produce a lot of food waste as a society. The crops that are bruised, the fruits that look less than perfect, they don't make it to our grocery shelves. And the food that spoils on the transportation routes, the peels from large food processors, mostly ends up in landfill. It's not composted like the food waste from our residential homes. We don't have a green bin format for those other sources of wasted food. In Canada alone, 4.3 million tons per year of food waste ends up in landfills. It's largely an untapped resource. Our circular waste to wardrobe solution at Altex begins with large scale post-industrial food waste donations. This is our input. Food waste tends to be rich in sugars and other similar components that are traditionally used in natural fibers. These components of food waste go through our novel synthesis process to create a polyester-like biofiber. At Altex, we recognize that none of the giant polyester manufacturers are willing to replace their equipment and adopt new technologies. Hence, Altex Fiber is designed to fit into the existing textile manufacturing supply chain to create fabrics of any style and texture. There's no need to change the way fibers or the filaments are weaved, dyed, or modified. Fabric manufacturers can use the same weaving, knitting, and dyeing technology. While the fiber is designed to look and feel like a polyester, the resulting garment will be carbon neutral and industrially biodegradable, even when blended with other natural fibers like cotton. The process is carbon neutral because Fossil fuels are not part of the input. No trees are cut to grow crops for all tax fiber. Instead, greenhouse gas emissions that food waste produces sitting in heaps and heaps of garbage in landfills is avoided. The energy all tax fabric saves is much more than the energy used to create all tax fabric. What does this mean in numbers? Altex fiber production will produce close to 80% fewer carbon emissions than fossil fuel based plastics. It eases the microplastic pollution problem as well because the fabric will biodegrade just the way cotton biodegrades. Altex fiber doesn't form long lasting microplastics the way polyester does. The fabric can decompose in a matter of months when it's industrially composted close to the same timeline as cotton and much quicker than polyester. By using food waste, our process uses substantially less water and definitively very little land. Today, we've talked about how much water goes into growing textile crops, but there's also a lot of water used in the later stages of fabric production. But by exclusively using food waste, and building a sustainable process, we not only save on the water, but we avoid pesticides, fertilizers, deforestation, and those heaps upon heaps of clothes that end in landfill. It helps the planet in more ways than one. 
you might be wondering, how can a biodegradable textile fiber compete with polyester? The beloved properties of polyester is something we're actively targeting in the labs for our prototype. The strength, the versatility, the durability of polyester. My team and I truly believe sustainability doesn't have to come at the cost of functionality or the lifespan of the clothes. I hope you can begin to believe this too. We can all do our part in various ways to reduce the strain on the environment. If I leave you with just one notion today, it would be this. Let's start having a conversation about what our clothes are made of. Who made them? Was the labor ethical? Was there a disproportionate cost to the environment? And what happens when we're done with this shirt? Where does it go? Let's become conscious consumers. Let's buy and dispose responsibly because slow fashion should be our future. And we can start by caring about the tag at the back of our clothes. Thank you.